Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and big welcome to the Community Collective Meetup, this one on reigniting an inactive community with our very special guest, Stelvo Ganassi. He is the Social and Community Support Manager at MYOB. My name is Desmond. I'm the Ecosystem Lead at Hatch Quarter. I'm also a Community Ambassador here at the Community Collective. I'm digging in from the land of the Wurundjeri people, and I'd like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land in which I gather today, and I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. But I'd love for you all to post into the chat where you're tuning in from. Taz will be posting in a link if you're not entirely sure where you are tuning in from, the traditional owners of the land. So have a go on that link and let us know where you're all tuning in from. Now, uh, digitally, we are tuning in from Butter. Now, has anyone used Butter? Is this anyone's first time using Butter? Raise your hand, put your, put your hand, you know, let us know in the chat. Um, I'd imagine a lot of you have used Butter before. For anyone that hasn't used Butter before, it is quite self-explanatory, but you might notice a few things are different. Uh, very distinct from the dairy product, as Paz always says, but you'll notice on the left-hand side, that's where a lot of your action items are, so some reacting emojis. There is a soundboard, but unfortunately, Paz is the only one that has access to that. So hopefully we'll hear a few sounds throughout the day. But then there's also options to make some notes, put us in chat, ask some questions and all those types of things. Do let us know if you do have any chat, any questions about Butter. So how is today going to work? We're going to start with a welcome. We'll do a check-in with myself and a check-in question. Then we're going to throw it over to Paz and Selva to do a Q&A. Then we'll do an audience Q&A, and then we're going to wrap up with some announcements and some very special community news. But in terms of today's agenda on the topic itself, in business, in startups, in communities, it's always a conversation about growth, uh, which is great, but sometimes, despite our best efforts, what we actually receive is stagnation and inactivity. So it is important to be reminded that growth isn't always linear. It's often a zigzag approach or a bit of a roller coaster as we do say in the ecosystem. So when it does come to community growth, it is quite common for members to be inactive. So we do love a comeback story. We love the hero's journey. And so when it does come to, you know, there's always an opportunity for a renaissance when reigniting an inactive community. So I'm very excited to learn from Selva and his experience in his community projects, particularly at MIOB and some of his other ventures that he is working on. So today we're all, we can all expect to learn about best practices in reigniting a dormant community. We're going to learn about some tactics in re-engaging inactive members, the frameworks that Selva is using in using to achieve MYOB's community goals, and then some additional tips in successful online community forums. So if this is your first meetup with the Community Collective, we are a group of community builders, mostly in the startup space. We do run several meetups online and in person, and we also do some several other initiatives, such as the Community Cohort, which Paz might talk about a little bit later. If it is your first time uh, joining this community meetup, we do have some CC house rules before we do jump to a group photo. So just a reminder to everyone or for anyone that doesn't know, this is a safe and supportive space. So any questions, uh, do be mindful of that. Uh, we are an open and honest with each other and we do have everyone's full support and respect. We do have some community guidelines, which we will put into the chat if you are curious about that. And we'd love for everyone to raise their hand if they do have a question. And um, yeah, so from that, I think we're all good to take a group photo. If you're happy to take that, Taz. So when Let's we do, do it, take Taz, a group photo, it... we might. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you had a rub preference for a bit of a C emoji or if anyone want to do a funny face or anything like that. But I might get ready for that. We'll do a C. Here we go. Oh, three, two, one. Oh, stunning. Fantastic. We'll circulate that photo afterwards and hopefully make some noise on socials. Now, before we do jump into the, the, the real Q&A, we'd love to start with check-in questions. So we usually start these check-ins with a bit of a ritual and that's just to check in, mainly just to connect, give everyone a voice before we start. So we're going to start with a check-in question that is related to this topic. So Paz will be putting up a poll, just a very simple, you know, just, you know, just a short answer poll. We'd love to know, do you feel like currently that your community members are disengaged? So you'll find that on the left-hand side. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, yes, it's fairly dormant, somewhat engaged, and then no, nope, members are fairly engaged, nothing but growth. All right. 
I think it's a bit of a one-sided poll. A lot of people opt into the somewhat, so we're getting a bit of engaged, but then also disengaged, which probably does relate to the growth aspect. As you know, you do grow, grow customers or any kind of community, you will have some that drop off, but then hopefully you're adding more new members there at the same time. Uh, very pleasing to see that uh, not everyone has, no, no one has chosen the members of fairly engaged option. Um, so I think, I think we got a pretty good feel from the group of uh, where members are sitting in everyone's different communities. So we'll probably give that another few seconds. And then I would love to throw it over to Paz to begin our meetup. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Des. Just a huge round of applause for that beautiful intro. Mm. Nice on butter when you can actually uh, share a round of applause. So welcome, everyone. My name is Paz Bazarski. I'm one of the co-founders of Butter, of Butter, of the Community Collective, actually. I wish I was a co-founder of Butter. And today I have the absolute pleasure of being your moderator and actually introducing you to Selva and as well asking um, some amazing questions. So I'd like to actually introduce you to Selva. And Selva and I connected... Oh, only quite recently, really, and I feel like I've known him for a very long time. And Selva is working at MYOB and has been doing a lot of great work there for strategy and, and building out what the community looks like, for a service-based business and an accounting business. And he's also the co-founder of Community Simplified um, and specialises really in helping brands and organisations build, engage and scale their communities to actually be community-led. Silver is deep in the community world, having worked at Chorus, or Quora, I'm Quora. Sorry, sorry. Quora, thank you. And as well is based in Christchurch uh, in New Zealand. So, Silver, how are you going today? Um, thanks uh, for the lovely introduction, Paz. Uh, I'm really good, um, and I'm really excited to meet all of these folks here. Um, who actually bring a lot of wealth um, to this conversation through their experience with communities. Um, so I am actually looking forward to the discussions that I'm going to have with uh, all of them and also share some of this learnings and experience that I've gained. So yeah, really good and great. It's just raining a bit, a lot more than usual here in crisis today, but other than good, Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of weather things going on at the moment. So we totally understand. And we're really excited to dive into this topic. We had over 45 questions submitted uh, before this. We're not going to dive into every single one of them. Um, but Selva, let's just jump straight in and set the scene. Can you please tell us what does an inactive community actually look and feel like? Like what are the key signs and the red flags for us all to really look out for? Yeah, sure. Um, and before jumping into that right away, I also want to like add this additional question of how do we define or like what a community means to you? Um, and, and someone recently asked me this question after like me being in the community industry for like 20 years, someone actually asked me, what's a community? How do you define community? Um, so for me, community is a group of people who collectively come together to solve a common goal or like work towards a common goal. Um, so that defines a community for me. And um, if, if you're able and able to understand this and comprehend this like really well, um, then one thing that you're clear about is the goal um, for your community and your community is like clear about why they are there, you know, and that actually answers a lot of questions related to why a community becomes active or inactive. Um, to me, if you ask, uh, you know, what's the, you know, what's the, what's the most successful community that's ever built since um, evolution is basically the community around religion. Um, why the purpose and the goal is like very, very clear there. Um, and and, and uh, so, so according to me, um, an inactive community is a community where people don't share um, a common goal they don't understand the purpose or they don't have or like get a value out of it. Um, so if you don't get all these three things, then your community is like 
are going to you know become inactive or like is inactive right now um and in terms of the key signs that you can look into like one is that interaction stops um and uh, humans actually come together um, for connections so if they don't find a connection and that interaction stops that's a primary sign that the community is like become um and then the second is the lack of engagement of course like you know they're not participating in whatever activities that you're doing they are not actually proactively asking or seeking out something within the community talking to each other etc um and uh, the content that is being created in case if you're like a content driven community it's is coming from like one person who is the community manager or from the organization uh, to educate the community so in this case what happens is that it's more of an audience versus a community uh, an audience is a group of people who listens to someone who is actually talking like currently what we are doing right now uh, a community is where when we start to get into dialogue like which will happen eventually as we you know progress through the course um so if it is more of an audience driven then there is like more of disengagement if it's more of a community and conversation and dialogue then that's actually going to be an engaged community uh, and then finally lack of diversity negative and toxic atmospheres um and no no clear guidelines of like what behaviors are accepted and not accepted can also be some of the early red signs and red flags in the community that's such a great framing and and so true with that you know differentiation between audience and community and this one way communication where people are just listening there's a lot of posts from us and not a lot of response or engagement back we all know that feeling on slack yeah. or portals or even social media we feel like you post something and share it and it just is crickets you know and yeah and it can be it can be hard and in terms of you know in your experience selva like what are the most common reasons the communities become inactive and how can we actually prevent this from happening is that something that we can actually have a say and influence on yeah um see this also ties in very well with the previous question that you asked um so basically those are the signs that you can you know in the early days start to understand and observe that what you could do so uh, the primary reason like as i say again is the clear lack of clear purpose or a shared goal so um i was recently talking to a friend of mine who's building a product and um, i'm trying to help them to integrate community into the product so when i was talking to them they definitely was not understanding the concept of community uh, they always address these people as like either customers clients or users so till the time you actually you know want them to use something that you are building without knowing what they want they are not going to participate um, they can still consume whatever you are offering them but in order for them to participate you need to understand what they want and then build accordingly um, and then slowly now i have you know from they acknowledging or like not acknowledging the community now they have actually come to a phase where they say that okay a part of my product is going to serve the community so now my um uh, uh, now my action will be to you know advocate them that no your product is for the community you know community is your product um and you're building for them so so that's something that you need to be very very clear about in terms of having the clear purpose or goal one for the business two for the community and then look at opportunities where you have alignment um so you know any of this opportunities that have between this community and business goals is common so something that you need to address so that that creates an opportunity for the community to be directly engaged with the product or things that you build so that clear, clearly creates a conversation um the second is basically the resources that are limited like you know um, often at times like even now we see you know in the global market community managers are the first uh, you know and that's not a good way to go forward because your if your product or like the services that you build is community centric then you need someone to actually understand the needs of the community communicate that back with the product or the services that you build and then try to bridge that gap um so if that is not happening and if you have like poor community management strategy in your organization then that would also like lead to an inactive community uh, and then thirdly um communications like you know um it's very clear uh, you should set very clear goals roles and expectations from the community of like why you want them 
what you want them to do and how you want them to do um and uh, if you can actually set those conversation up front and clear and make sure that everybody is notified about their role of uh, the presence of why they are a part of the community then that would also create engagement so if these three key components are lacking then i think you know we are not like in fact thinking about community it's a group of audience we are like happy to have them within our product or the ecosystem but we are not like you know thinking in direction of like engaging with them yeah and that point around community is the product like you're just flipping the whole thing on the head you know it's it's really powerful when you actually realize community is everything because businesses are set up to serve customers usually communities for businesses are serving customers so it, there is that shared goal yeah. and just like you said selva when you really think about what does the community look for what does the business look for and where do they overlap like that is the sweet spot yeah and what we can do as community builders is look at that communication the expectations and the engagement i've also um found it really helpful when you have clear expectations around time commitment you know so commonly we set up big programs with clear time commitment with start and end dates and same with communities yeah. this can be applied where you set start end and you know those those really key starting and closing what the time commitment looks like so you know that level of engagement whether it's low or yeah. high as well and engagement i mean that is really the crux of this whole conversation so Selva, do you have any innovative or creative tactics, maybe some secrets that you could share with us or things that you've seen from other organizations who've really successfully engaged communities but also revived dormant ones? Um, yeah, perhaps. I mean, um, this could come as a surprise, but the secret to this is basically to keep it simple um, and there is no secret. Um, uh, honestly speaking, like, um, you know, you can, you can actually put together all these group of community in like so many different buckets, like creator community, writer community, music community, X, Y, Z community, et cetera, et cetera. But if you actually look at the common factor among all of these community, you're handling people. Uh, and if you understand people, then it is much more simpler for you to actually solve for them and, and be for them. Um, but yeah, of course, like having said that, there are like some quite unique ways folks could actually, you know, work with the community or like do some innovative tactics to engage them. Um, and one great example that I do remember is from this Lego. Um, early in uh, the 2000s, Lego actually was struggling to maintain their customer base. Um, and they were facing like stiff competition, particularly from the video game industries and other form of like the entertainment industry booming. Um, so just to re-engage with their, their fans, what they did was that they launched a program called Lego Factory, uh, where the customers can actually come into the factory and then build their own Lego sets uh, and then share their creation with others online. And that initiative not only reactivated the Lego community, but also resulted in new product ideas that the company could develop. And today, you know that, you know, I am one of the big fan of Legos, you know, uh, my mom actually scolds me for buying Lego toys at this point, this age though. But, uh, you know, um, you see uh, the way you can actually spin around and then look at the new opportunities and the diversity of market available just by interacting with your community is like huge. So uh, that's that's really a um, case study that I still remember. Like, you know, there are like so many other case studies. Starbucks did something similar. Airbnb came up with the entire experience component to, you know, respin their um, product just from being like hosting to actually offering more products. There is Sephora community who actually came up with this beauty insider community concept that completely changed the way they built and engage their community. So uh, just to give you the key components of it, one is listening to your community, um, like con consistently listening what they want. Uh, and then uh, you can also build micro communities within the community so that there is like more engagement and conversation and pick up ideas from there and then personalize it as much as possible to address their needs and solve their problems so um, these are some of these key innovative tactics that i think have worked in the past will be working now probably will also work in the future 
unless like artificial intelligence replaces all of these things um i don't think so like you can you can never replace that human value you know um at the end of the day it's it's human to human connection the support that we offer each other and uh, the point of being compassionate and kind uh, and creating a better world and just lots of lego presents you know it's the key <laughs> to engagement i love it selva no no that that point there is is really you know it really lands because at the end of the day we're dealing with humans and how do humans like to connect and what what do humans find valuable and how can you weave that into your community and your offerings and you know to even build on that selva i've seen uh, some really great engagement tactics through co-creation mm. Anna Maria, she's the head of community of Butter. Uh, she's based in Europe and she lives and breathes um, co-creation. So one of her tactics is when you don't know what to do or you feel uncertain or you don't know how to make a decision, you're not sure what the members might want, ask them. Mm. Go out, co-create, involve them with uh, in the conversation, whether it's in phone calls, messages, you put out your survey or a form but you are speaking to them as much as you can and then doing exactly what you said, which is listening. Yeah. And, you know, we hear a lot about incentives or rewards. You know, there's the rise of the whole gamification to increase engagement. Do you think any of these kind of tactics are worth us exploring in our own communities? Um, see, personally, I am against all of these things. Like, that's just my personal opinion, but it doesn't matter when it comes to the industry, like what all we can do. Um, I'll tell you why I am not in favor of the gamification and rewards and incentives, because it entirely solves or it defeats the overall goal of why that community is part of this. You know, and that's why I, I have, I always have my, you know, uh, counterpoint towards religion because, you know, uh, you actually go to God to ask for something, thinking that they are going to give it back to you. So that defeats the primary purpose of why you are together. You're here to support each other. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, I'm just deviating away from the point. So incentives, gamification, rewards are like a good way to actually, you know, start something um, and, and also like... Um, um, if you if you like are facing like some trouble and engaging with the community and observing that they are dormant and inactive, maybe these are some things that could start, but this can't sustain. Uh, in order to sustain that, your value and the goals that you have for the community should have a larger purpose. Uh, but these are some you know kind of like a, a little fuel or like addition to give that extra push to start get get things started so in that ways incentives of course like you can offer something like uh, a referral bonus leaderboards um particularly with respect to um, the um, gaming community there are like a lot of things that they could actually get for free so that they can integrate that into their gaming gamings uh, and then um rewards such as like badges status points um, in some cases, that's also used as like a certificate to show them that they are an expert in this field to sell something that they want to sell it to their community. Um, so in any ways, all of this are like short term wins and not a long term win. Um, and uh, if we are like looking at a long term win, then you need to have like that, you know, purpose much more clearer and uh, buy in from the community. That's a really great differ differentiation between those kind of short-term gains and the long-term gains. And, you know, hopefully we're all here in for the long run, you know, that like building community doesn't happen overnight. It takes months, years, decades to build really strong routines and rituals and engagement over time. And, you know, things that I've seen as well of incentives that can help arm the community to speak about it externally of giving those almost badges. There's a big wave of equipping people with copy to update their LinkedIn to say that they're a part of communities, which helps with uh, growth and referrals. But at the end of the day, if that was all that you were focusing on, it's hard to understand what end result you would actually get. So I, I agree. They're not the the sole solution for long-term engagement but if you have a clear purpose of what you're trying to achieve then you could definitely explore those um, different types of options as well totally 
And communication, you know, you mentioned that earlier and I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into communication because it really is everything, how we talk and explain things and connect with people. So I'm curious, how important is communication when trying to re-engage like inactive members Mm -hmm. and, you know, what kind of channels do you use to typically reach out to members? Are you going across multiple or just doubling down on one? Could you just unpack this a little bit for us? Yeah, sure. Um, Yeah, before going into communication, um, there are these three Cs which are like the entire backbone of community. Um, One, the first C stands for connection. Um, Like people talking to each other, finding that, you know, sort of like value of uh, between each other, like exchanging ideas, thoughts, knowledge, etc. And second, the conversation. Um, and you know, what sort of things they're talking to each other, what sort of value they're getting out of that conversation, how do they communicate with each other? And the third is communication. So connection, conversation and communication are kind of like my backbone for any community. Um, and all of these things are like interconnected without a great communication tool. You can't create that conversation without the conversation you can't make connection. So, um, it's, it's, that's why I call it as a spinal cord for community. Like it's so crucial. Um, in terms of communication, um, it is really, really important to, to talk to people as much as you can if they are a part of your community. So one thing that has always worked for me in the past when I built community was my one-on-ones. Um, I know it is really time-consuming thing. Um, I know it's hard for you to find time, but that is really, really worth it. Um, and particularly if you build that on your early stages, you will never end up in having an inactive community at all. Because once once you build that sort of like connection and conversation through your communication, they actually will be acting on your behalf to run the community in the future. So you do have less to do and they take care of like your work. I mean, it's not outsourcing, of course. Uh, I'm not meaning that, but you're creating ambassadors, right? So um, that's one way, like uh, the personal conversation. So I try to reach out to them on like private messaging as much as possible if the community allows you to like, you know, write to them personally uh, and if not then the next mode is the platform of course like as much as possible engage in the comments um, like when I work for Quora like you know people write answers and in the first like 100 or like 300 days you would find my comment in every single answer um, and uh, through that I'm also learning more about that person and when I learn more about the person, my comments can be also be more personalized. So for example, someone is actually sharing a song which some other people like. So you go and like tag that person and say that, hey, this song you like, maybe you should read this. You know, that actually then allows the community to think that they are being actually paid attention to, they are being valued. Someone is interacting with them and they are finding a purpose to, you know, connect and converse. Uh, the next best mode is social media. Um, you know, if you are uh, good in listening to your community through social media channels, then um, you can respond to them uh, as much as in a personalized way, solve their issues there. That's another way to, re- you know, reach out to them. Um, and then uh, the third uh, best way is to conduct events and meetups. So this is a great way to connect to a lot of new people. From you. uh, and we are all in the community industry, right? And there's going to be like a lot of shared learnings that we can, you know, take away from each other. Um, conduct something like, Uh, a meetups for the community where they can come and collectively either talk about their problem, you know, crib about your product, um, or also appreciate about the work that you do. Like, you know, um, I am also as much as, as much as I want to receive appreciation, I also want to receive as much as criticism and feedback as much as possible so that I can actually go back and then work and solve their problem. Uh, So these are my three primary main ways to connect. Um, And then uh, if you ask the other ways could also be like, uh, emailing um, but you know email is a lot of competition because you're actually going to go into their um, you know, updates inbox within the google mail or a social inbox within the google mail so i don't know how much of attention you'll get um, but that's still one of the most you know frequently used medium of communication with your community wow there is so much gold in there you know, even just starting with the three C's, 
first, I think maybe we should change the community collective name to be the community collective community. So we're the three C's <laughs> of connection, conversation, and communication. But honestly, you know, that really is the crux of it all. And without communication, you can't have connection and, you know, you really would struggle to make conversation as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think in that's such a good point about how you communicate and where you communicate. And some, some things that I've seen that work really well when communicating, especially in your, perhaps you have online meeting points, you use Slack or Discord or Facebook or, you know, member portals. When you're sharing posts or updates, you, updates your communication is also encouraging engagement. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I mean by that is that I'll give you an example. You could say, hey, it's Monday, here are the events on this week. That's your post and mm -hmm. your communication. If you want to take that a bit further and ask for engagement, you say, hey, it's Monday, here are the events on this week. Add an emoji if you're excited. Oh, I'll add an emoji. There's some engagement. There's an easy step that someone could take. But you take that a level further with your communication and you say, hey, here are the events on this week. What events uh, are you running this mm -hmm. week? Share them below. And then you start a conversation and you build connection. And you may say, oh, I'm going to that event too. Should we go together? Yeah, that makes sense. So straight away, you just took an events update post to actually now potentially connecting people at an, at an event that didn't, you know, require you to organize it. Yeah. So think about when you're communicating with your community, how you can also encourage communication and you make it really easy for people to participate and respond. I think that has been something that's, yeah, been really evident when, you know, communicating online with people as well. True. Cool. And that element of, of feedback, Selva, you know, feedback is a gift and it really can um, be such a supportive thing that helps people grow and, and hear from it as well. And, you know, I, I'd love to kind of unpack that and, and, and talk about members mm -hmm. because, you know, what role do members actually play in revitalizing an inactive community? Can they share feedback on their experience in the community? You know, can you actually unpack about, you know, how, how we can actually leverage the contribution from members and the insights and the opinions that they hold as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, Bas, um, thanks for the question. Again, like, it's a great follow-up question to whatever we were discussing. Um, you know, um, as I said, these members are going to become ambassadors for you. Um, and once you create such ambassadors, they are the torch bearers for you. Like, you know they make community managers job much more simpler um, and give new perspectives and answers to the new members who join the community just by guiding like you know um and you save a lot of time like because you're not repeating whatever you want to share with the community someone else is doing the job on behalf of you um and and they will actually be the ones who would uh, uh, nurture mentor and uh, handhold the new members to explore what possibilities um, the new member have within the community. Um, and and uh, that also, you know, that conversation that happens between them could potentially give you new ideas um, in what all you need to do, you know, in, in terms of the future when you're scaling and when you want the community to be much more active. And then uh, the most vital component of this community members is the feedback they give. Um, and uh, often, like we fail to uh, notice uh, that some of this, um, you know, product pain points or like you know some of the pain points of community experience when they are actually you know using whatever you built for them um, uh, is something a blind spot for us. Um, because, like, you know, I always have this thought process. Whenever you do something, you think that that's the best that you're doing. Like, maybe giving a talk or, like, you know, cooking or, like, doing something. Like, you always tend to miss that, you know, small thing that could add a big difference to whatever you did. And that's why it's always important to listen to feedback of others. Because, like, I mean, in MBA terms, we call something called Johari window, where there is a blind spot which you can't see. Um, and this feedback discussions and sessions actually get those um, blind spots to us. Um, and the next thing is that when when you hear the feedback, it is always important that the company should listen to that feedback, acknowledge, and also, if possible, try to work on that. 
um, and not just work on that, go back to them and say that, hey, you gave a great feedback. You know, we did this and this is the change we made. And that actually boosts the confidence of the member um, and also make them feel that, you know, yes, I am participating. Yes, I am actually contributing to the growth. I'm actually a part of this community. Um, and then uh, three, creating, like, as you say, the co-creation of content, you know, co-creation of any discussions that's happening. Um, you do it with the community. Like, for example, that when we run meetups, we always encourage community members to come and join us as hosts. Uh, like you're a part of this community meetup, like uh, you actually moderate the session. Um, you know, we will actually sit back and listen to what people have to, you know, uh, talk and engage about. So, yeah, so these are like three um, key components that I think uh, that is important, uh, particularly when it comes to engaging members and, um, you know, making the members do more for you. That's fantastic. Thank you. I, I feel like we need a transcript of everything you're saying to to capture all of the gold here and read it again. So oh, I've actually written down yeah, a but, copy, so I can share my my notes afterwards if you want. To. Oh, oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah, we can share that with everyone uh, in the in the post event email for sure. I think um, you know I've got I've got two more questions here for sure. you Selva but also I want to encourage uh you know everyone here if you've got some questions some challenges or things that you're trying to work through with engagement and and communities feel free to post them in the chat or you can jump in the queue and click on I have a question and I can pass you the mic and you can actually ask it live uh which is always you know great you get to actually talk to Selva as well so I'll ask a question about alumni and advice, but if anyone has anything else, feel free to uh, share and we can pass to you as well. So Selva, in the registration process, we actually had a lot of questions from our members about alumni and alumni re-engagement. And we have a lot of people here on the call as well that run programs, you know, maybe they're like five, 10 programs in, and now they have this huge alumni community, which is like another second community as well. And so do you have any tips for us all here who might be running programs and dealing with alumni about how to actually re-engage them or keep them engaged? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, see, Baz, I mean, honestly speaking, like, you know, in today's world, we are competing for people's time. Um, and time is money and value. Um, so the first and simple most answer that I give to anyone who asks about that, why I am not able to bring this person to my community is that, are you actually giving them something that they want? Um, uh, you know, um, typically what happens with the alumni community, like, um, is that we take them for granted. Uh, because they did this course, probably they will feel value in the community. Because they went to this college, probably they will contribute to this alumni group. Um, because they were a part of this cohort, maybe, you know, they will they will be you know engaging themselves in that you know engaging in that course cohort or you know college gave them some value they learned something they took away something but are you actually providing at least one tenth of the value when they become part of your alumni um, typically what happens is that you know communities actually send e email invites to alumni asking them to come and participate in an event um, one you know uh, in many stages, they are not even consulted of like, you know, how this event should look like, um, what sort of like event would add value or benefit for them, et cetera, right? So follow a democratic process there, honestly speaking, um, because if they found value in the cohort or the course or in, in that college, then they will definitely find the value after they pass to the cohort or course or the college as well. Um, unless like, you know, you are doing something without they needing it. And if that is the case, then they won't participate. Uh, and then continue to share updates for them in terms of like, you know, um, what you're up to, what sort of like processes you follow, how do you want to engage with the alumni community, discussions, polls, opinions, feedback, same things that we discussed in like, uh, you know, uh, earlier in the other questions, right? So have that uh, connection, communication and conversation going. Um, um, and then uh, um, uh, finally, um, you know, um, you organize events that actually brings values and purpose to what they're doing in their, you know, personal or professional life. And if that component is missing, 
um, um, then if I don't see a value in going to an event myself and getting something out of it, um, I won't participate. And that's one or like, you know, the top three reasons what I think um, are missing in today's alumni community, like in, in, in most places. Um, but if we can crack these um, three problems and then solve it for them uh, and then give them more value, uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, we can create a thriving, engaging alumni community as well. That's the dream, a thriving, engaged alumni community, you know, and, and you know, as Kim has pointed out in the chat, co-creation again. How can you co-create with your alumni and ask them what they want? If you haven't spoken to them, to them in a while, maybe just reach out and just yeah. see what would be of value. Yeah. So I, I completely agree with that. And we have a question here um, in the chat. Let me mm -hmm. just uh, pull it out. It's from Kirst and it's about tech tools. And it says, is Slack your favorite tool for communication in a community? Would you be able to dive into that a little bit more, Selva? Um, I do love Slack. I mean, um, so I may be biased. Um, so if you're creating a community within Slack, then it's a great tool to communicate because it allows you to one broadcast message to a wider channel and then create micro community within that community, um, have close group discussions, tag people. Um, and if you're a paid member, perhaps like you can also store your messages for longer duration uh, compared to a free use of only for three months. Uh, and uh, their emojis are great. You can add like a lot of new emojis to that. Um, and, 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 and also perhaps like it could be integrated with other tools. Um, and there are like other apps that can easily get integrated with Slack. So I do love Slack. I mean, that goes without saying this. I'm a huge Slack fan as well. There's, there's no denying that. I think, you know, if you are looking at other communication tools, I'm a, uh, that's really funny, Kirst. I'm a Slackaholic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe if, if you don't enjoy Slack or your members don't use Slack, I've seen a lot of people ask what kind of tools people use. So I've seen a lot of um, people use WhatsApp. They actually just launched a WhatsApp communities. Yeah. So you can actually have a WhatsApp community and then they have sub communities in it. Uh, there are a lot of people on Discord as well. And there's a few questions in the chat here about, you know, I want a place for the forum and the content and the communication. Like where are our inbuilt ready to go community tools? There's a lot of different things out there at the moment. Um, and a lot of different types of tech stacks and portals that you can look at that yeah. also have those um, type of communication elements. So we'll share a few in the follow-up email instead of listing them all here as well. Okay, we've got a question about advice. So Selva, what's one thing we should all remember when building strong and highly engaged communities if you were going to just wrap it all up in one uh, sentence or a few. Yeah, you asked for one thing, I'll say it in one word, patience. Um, community requires patience. Uh, and if you don't have that patience, then community is not for you. Because community don't give you results tomorrow. It won't give you a result the day after as well. It will yield results in its own sweet time. Um, because it's like a growing a child uh, the more you nurture, mentor, you know, give, um, it will come back when it grows up. It's like growing a tree. Um, the trees don't bear fruits the next day, right? You need time for this to nurture and build in, on its own. And then, you know, at some time it will start to give. And when it starts to give, it actually pours. Um, and that's the ROA you have. Like, you know, I generally hate this question when, you know, people ask about what's an ROA from a community? Like, no, there's no ROA in a community. Uh, not today. Uh, it will give you back. Um, it, it's it's going to talk for you, you and your product in the future. So have patience and uh, persistence and be authentic and, and how you stand for your community. And you, you can always build a strong community by doing this through. Patience, very powerful. It takes a long time and, you know, keep it simple is one of the big themes I'm hearing from this conversation. You know, do less and do it well. 
is such a great reminder for a lot of us because we can get pulled in many, many different, many different areas and ways. You know, there's a lot yeah. in this community bucket that then yeah. seems to grow and grow and. And no, and that's, so. that's why I named my company as Community Simplified. Like we are actually demystifying, demystifying a lot of facts here and then saying that it's so simple. It's not complicated at all. Um, don't look into the jargons that's, that are being used. It's so simple because it's people. Like We know people. You know, you have a family. I have a family. We have friends. We work with them. We build with them. And we can build with like other people as well. Right? So it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Well, we've got a question here from Jared, and I might just open up to audience Q and A from now on, sure. um, and dive into yeah some more questions from the group here. So, if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to jump in the queue and and put your hand up and ask live. Otherwise, let's go to this question from Jared. It says, "Hi, Selva. Thanks for sharing your insights. Can you give any advice on establishing a new community from scratch?" Any tips on helping people find a new community? Um, sure, Jared, thanks for the question. Like, um, you know, um, it's always good to build a new community like uh, from scratch, which is great uh, because you, you're starting fresh and you have a clean slate. Um, one thing that I, I will always focus is to do a bit of research. Um, is there a need for such a community? Like, why are creating that community? What does the community want? Can we actually build things with them? Um, and and uh, if you are able to do that and do a bit of like or like complete thorough research to understand the needs of the community, then definitely yes. How can you start? You can actually start right away by engaging your friends and family. That's an you know immediate win for you to give a honest feedback about like what you're building for them, and then slowly asking them to refer their friends, and then eventually you know, scaling it out of your second level network, third level network, and then make it public. Um, but yeah, test it out, do an alpha beta phase, see the results change, whatever needs to be changed and then go. Amazing. Yeah, we also have done a whole talk on building a community from scratch. Um, so Jared will find that for you and we can link it up in the post event email where we spoke to actually a community collective member who's built a community from scratch called SportsGrad, which is for helping people grads land jobs in the sport industry. And they've done an incredible, incredible job building something um, as well. So I also recommend when like um, really thinking about building community from scratch, finding your advocates and your, you know, the first 10 people who are really sold on what you're doing and just working with them and, comes back to that co-creation piece because when you can solve something for a really specific audience and double down on that, you can just go really deep in the value there and that really would grow with um, just delivering really solid outcomes actually. And we've got a couple minutes left before we've got to wrap up, Selva. So just in terms of um, diversity, we had a question submitted during registration that was mm -hmm. about managing really diverse communities, uh, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps across different time zones, across different cultures and different industries and stages. You know, do you have any tips on how we can serve a community when there are lots of different sub communities within it? Yeah, um, sure. So when it comes to diversity, time zones, culture, um, it's pretty essential to acknowledge that there are people who would you know do things in their own ways um, because of the cultural differences um, and there is quite a lot of possibility that whatever you want to communicate with them may or may not be perceived the way that you want them to accept it um, and willing to acknowledge that problem in the first uh, and then trying to work towards that to make them understand the way they understand is a first step towards that and then second I mean, any community, like, you know, not just a diverse community, even a smaller community within our office space or like anywhere, um, creating that sense of safety and trust is important. Um, and then having that space for anyone to open up and then feeling safe that they won't be attacked based on a cultural barrier, um, you know, or, or, or based on the, 
geography where they are actually logging in from uh, makes a huge uh, difference. Um, so it is also possible for you to foster some sort of like cross-cultural exchange between people. So, you know, pairing them with someone who understands this local culture to educate them on the local culture from here and also learning about the culture from there and then sharing that with other folks in a common meetup like that can also be something that would be useful. Um, and also understanding time zones um, and giving them their own sweet time to respond or like come back in case if people are asking questions um, and making sure that you don't pester them when they're like away or on the weekend uh, could be like definitely helpful. 100%. I think we'll we'll do a bit of a write up after this silver and, and summarize some of these great key points and and so we're actually going to have to wrap it there um, and and wrap up, wrap up our beautiful conversation. Um, but before we do, do you have any parting words or last nuggets of wisdom that you'd like to share with us? Um, no, uh, perhaps not wisdom. Like, see, I'm not a monk or like, you know, a saint to share wisdom and all. Um, uh, I think uh, I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity for like talking to folks here. I, and I'm seeing a lot of folks who are in the community industry. So it would be good to connect with all of you and learn from you as well. Um, see, I, I, I always believe that learning is a two way process, like, you know, um, and, and I, I, I think I thoroughly enjoyed that the fact that so many people ask questions so that I can actually come and share what I have known from my past work, um, you know, as answers to these questions. And these questions also provoke me to think in a lot of new directions. That is uh, something that I'm missing that I have not like done in the past. So that way, I think I have learned a lot from this conversation as much as if I've actually given back. So thank you for that. So that's, that's my last words. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Selva, on behalf of everyone here, the Community Collective, myself and Des, just thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with all of us. Thank you, thank you. No worries, we'll stay dry in the rain there, Selva. I know you're not outside the rain right now, but. <laughs> Um, all the best for the rest of your day and for everyone else here. Thank you for joining us and making time in your day. You actually spend time uh, with community builders who are out there doing the work, building communities. They are all deep in it in some shape or form and at any stage. And, you know, I would actually just like to close out by just saying thank you and also reminding you of one of our values, which is feedback is a gift and a way that we love to encourage feedback in our community at the CC is to actually give you an opportunity to share feedback on your experience today. Once you submit the form as well, we'll send you the post-event email with the recording, a discount of butter if you want to be in this buttery goodness uh, in your own community, and as well a summary of some of the key learning. So, feel free to click the link in the chat and share some feedback, which will help us. Or if you need some help doubling down on community, we've actually extended the application deadline for our community cohort and applications close tomorrow at 12 p.m. and we won't be reopening them for another six months. And really this is an opportunity to get the tailored support you need to build a community strategy, really upskill in public speaking and facilitation, connect with other community builders who are also actively building community we have over 50 applications already and every single person has blown my mind. And there are many different types of communities, whether it's VCs, not for profits, products for organizations or by tech companies. Come one, come all. We are here for it as long as you're building community. Uh, or if you know someone who should join us and would benefit from actually meeting other community builders, feel free to send them our website or connect with us on LinkedIn as we are always looking to support more people. So a massive thank you from me and I just hope you all have a beautiful day. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We are here to help you with whatever you may need. Thank you so much again, Selva and Des for helping us run today's meetup and for everyone else who joined. Have a beautiful day. Great, thank you, Bess. Thank you, everyone. It's great. Thank you guys. Bye.